Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. This is part three of our Christmas series. In our first video, we covered the Dresden Christmas wreath behind me. And in our second video, we did the English paper piecing ornaments. And today we'll be talking about the poinsettia pillow. Super fun. It's a mostly no sew pro uh, project. Little bit of sewing, but not extensive. Let's get started. And you're gonna be wanting to make these for friends and family. It's so fun, so easy. Um, free download. Be sure to go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage. There's a link for free downloads. Click that. You're looking for the poinsettia pattern, actually poinsettia pillow. Um, and it looks like we've got four pages there and just download that. And also be sure to subscribe to YouTube. If you're just finding us for the first time, we have so many fun DIY projects and quilting projects. Just subscribe and that way you'll never miss a video. Um, once you have these downloaded, this is kind of your um, first page will be kind of your overall what we're going to do. And then you'll be printing out three more pages. You'll just cut those uh, pattern shapes out on the line. And of course, we're telling you how many you need to cut of each shape. The dot, I want to call your attention to that, the dot on each one of the template pieces means that that point goes toward the center of the pillow. More about that shortly. So we went ahead, of course, and cut out all of our pieces out. We used wool felt for this. It worked great because it's really a no-sew product. You don't have to worry about the edges fraying. It just doesn't. You could certainly do this out of wool. Um, but the first thing that we did with our pillow is we wanted it to be pre-quilted. So we got a piece of fabric, 17 inches. We chose a fusible batting and ironed it to the back and we just drew a grid on there and just did some straight stitches along those lines and it has a really nice quilted look so that's a great option once you have that quilted you'll trim that down to 16 and a half now you could of course make your pillow larger if you wanted to that seemed to be just the right amount of poinsettia and field so this size worked great for us again trim that down to 16 and a half and it has an envelope backing, which we'll go over a little bit later on. So you could um, buy a standard pillow form that's 16 inches, it'll slip right into the back of your pillow. Um, so let's pretend this is all pre-quilted and we'll put that aside for now. Now, once you've got your pattern uh, shapes cut out, you'll grab your wool felt and I'll just grab the red because I have it handy today. And it looks like piece A, piece A, you cut two of those. That's your green. That's going to be for your two leaves and everything else beyond that is red. Now we just chose one red for all the petals. You could choose a variety of reds and really make kind of a nice gradient. So lots of options there. But just grab your pattern piece, right side up of course, and you can simply pin that to the background. If you have a couple options here. You can trace around that with a friction pen, and that's always a great option. Just know that if you do use the friction pen on a darker fabric, this included, when you try to iron it away, it will be a, leave a little bit of a hazy line. So if you're going to trace this on with the friction pen, just cut out just inside of that line so that black edge is not showing um, because even when you iron it away, it'll be kind of like a milky haze. So the other option is to not trace at all. Simply pin this very well to the background and cut around. Just letting you know what those options are. Whatever you do, I highly recommend that you go ahead and put that pattern piece right back on top of that uh, wool felt before you move on because the petals all look so similar. You're not going to remember which piece is B, which piece is C, so on and so forth. So let's put this aside for now. Let's pretend like we have our background already pre-quilted and trimmed down to our 16 and a half. How do you find the center of anything? You simply fold here and fold again. That's how I like to find center. And I just have to keep my eye on that little crease and it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and mark it because I'm going to have a bunch of fabric covering that up and I just want to make sure that I understand exactly where my center is. Now, this is where the diagram comes in. A to 
Okay, all right, so you're gonna start with your A pieces, then move on to B, C, D, and all the way up through K. So it's very simple to follow. This is your layout kind of diagram. So we'll take our two A's. Now remember I said that the green dot is toward the center, so that's center and center, right? Just like that. Now I am simply looking at this for just a visual guide. There's no measuring, it's just, does that look about right? And I'm trying to get those points right to the center. And that looks about right to me, just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pin this. And I'll grab a couple more pins here. I'm gonna pin that a little bit better. Now keep the center lane kind of open because if you notice, you can see this on the other petals, how we've sewn the veins in. So let me keep that center lane open. You remember how I said if we mark on a darker fabric with the friction pen, it's gonna leave a haze. So we're not gonna do that, but we are going to kind of get an idea. We found if you went about half to maybe three quarters of the petal only down the center, it leaves the sides to kind of lift up and give a 3D effect. So I'm just going to visually start here come in toward my center point and continue till about here. Now, if you start here, you'd have to go there and stop and start again. So there's a lot of logic to starting where you're going first, coming right through the center and continuing. So let's go do that together. Now, I just chose a masterpiece coordinating thread in green. If you do not have the masterpiece color cards, there's 75 beautiful colors from masterpiece. Um, that's from Superior Threads. They're 100% cotton, and they're a 50 weight Egyptian cotton. I love them. 600 yards on a spool, that's a lot of thread. And look at their beautiful range of greens and on here as well. So that's what we're using today. I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the sewing machine. As you would expect with any project, be sure to reinforce the beginning and the end since we don't want this to fray in time here. Or not fray, but just come unthreaded. And we'll just go back. Okay, now I'm just going to give a, a, a kind of a, a nice arc to it. I'm just kind of going for it right now, I'm not following the line. I want to point out something. As we come to the center, um, the tip of the other leaf is going to want to lift up. Just go slow through the middle and that'll help that tip to kind of stay down there. Okay, let me just make sure that, yep, now I'm under it. Now I'm just gonna do a nice arc here. And I'll just stop right there. So let's look and see how we did. Now if you like glitter and sparkle, Go ahead and use a really fun, sulky metallic thread. We have a really neat assortment of metallic threads right now. Um, I like the glitter and the rhinestones and the, all of that um, sequins, sparkly stuff. So that might be a nice, fun thing to add to it so that it actually stands out versus just blending in. So you see how I did this. Now, let's go back to our diagram. We've done A. Uh, let's see, we have one B coming up next. So as you can see, right, there's our point. We're just going to visually put that there, so on and so forth. And you're just gonna continue pinning, pin one side, pin the other. You could go ahead, because remember how we wanna start here and go through the center? You lay out C as well. There's my point to the center. You get the idea, you're just going to keep going. And you're gonna keep doing this all the way through. Just know, obviously you're building these layers, right? Because the next layer that's coming on here is going to be D, and now you're starting to stack things on top of each other, and you're getting more and more thickness building. Anytime I have a lot of thickness I'm going through, maybe it's heavy fabric or something like this, just go slower. Um, that's when having a nice sharp needle is handy, having good thread is really important. So just keep plowing through those layers, but slowly and just, you know, kind of work it through the pressure foot as best you can. Once that's all the layers are on, now 
you'll continue in that fashion all the way to the top, ending with K as your top layer. We've done that ahead of time. At that point, you'll be ready to prepare your pillow back. So let's put this aside. And if you've never done an envelope backing, it's so, so simple. You'll simply turn this under a quarter of an inch and press and turn it under a quarter of an inch again and press. And then just sew that seam, an eighth of an inch seam allowance at that point. And you'll have, you'll do that again on this and they'll just crisscross. And I'll show you what that looks like on here. So this was our pillow front. I wanted to show you what that looks like. We've got the one flap and we have the other flap and you'll go ahead and pin and you'll sew all the way around all four sides. Whenever I get ready to turn something that has a 90 degree corner, I like to just clip in. Now be careful you don't clip. That probably isn't gonna really do a whole lot, but at, at least it has a little bit less bulk in the corner. Any kind of relief where you're taking away the bulk of fabric really helps something turn out and have a nice square corner versus kind of a more, more rounded corner. So I will go ahead and turn this right side out. This is the fun part. I love turning this because it's the surprise, right? It's like unwrapping a gift. All of your work is now going to be on the, on the outside versus on the inside. Now you can see me kind of trying to get in those corners. We have the crease turner. I believe that's what it's called. I can't remember the exact name of this tool, but it'll be mentioned below in our products. Just get this. It's the handiest little tool. And you just get in those corners and those spots that you seem to can't get with your fingers, it just seems to get them. See how that works? It just kind of gets in there. And now I have a nice 90 degree corner versus kind of a rounded blob. So then you'll just simply buy your 16 inch pillow form. You could always make a 16 inch pillow and simply insert that into your project. We went ahead and found some um, glitter jingle bells. Um, there's red jingle bells, gold jingle bells. And we just went ahead and with that opening, we just stitched those to the center. You could put a little bit of glitter on the tips of the poinsettia, whatever you wanna do to make it your own. So be sure to subscribe to our channel so you will not miss any part of the Christmas series and all of the other videos we have available.